Hi guys and welcome to another video and in this video lesson we're going to be looking at statistics interpretation of the cumulative frequency curve also known as the ogive curve the question that we're going to be looking at is from the november 2018 paper 2. it reads as follows the cumulative frequency graph or the ogive drawn below shows the total number of food items ordered from a menu over a period of one hour so let's go look at this curve cumulative frequency graph or ogive and as you can see the cumulative frequency is on the y-axis and the number of minutes is on the x-axis or independent variable and as you can see the ogive or cumulative frequency curve looks like an s-shaped curve now the first question that we have here it says write down the total number of food items ordered from the menu during this hour so the total number of food items ordered from the menu during this hour will be the sum of all your frequencies which will be 140 so therefore it will be 140 so answer 1.1 1. 1. 1 is 140 food items the next question is write down the modal class of the data the word modal means the frequency must be the highest for that particular class so we're looking for the class with the highest frequency so the highest frequency would be the distance between two dots which will be the greatest so we're looking for the greatest distance between any two of these dots and we can see here that between 20 and 30 we have the greatest distance which will mean that this is the highest frequency if you were asked for this particular frequency then it would be this value here so it's around about 78 and we would now subtract 30 so 78 minus 30 that'll be 48 so in this particular interval 48 food items were ordered now, they just asked us for the class, so therefore, we need to write this interval between 20 and 30. So therefore, for 1.142, we'll say x is greater than 20 and less than equals to 30. x is greater than 20 or less than equals to 30. Or, we can write x greater than equals to 20 and less than 30. Now remember one boundary has to have a greater than sign and one has to have a greater than equal to sign. This is so that we don't have repeating values in a particular interval. So 1.1.3 How long did it take to order the first 30 food items? So the first 30 food items would be here so the first 30 food items so we have to now look at going to our curve and getting the time and that would be 20 minutes so therefore it took 20 minutes to order the first 30 food items so the answer for 1.1.3 will be 20 minutes One point one point four. Now, in this particular question, they say how many food items were ordered in the last fifteen minutes. Here, they want the number of food items. So we have to now look to the y-axis for our solution. The last fifteen minutes. So let's go look at the last fifteen minutes. So the last fifteen minutes will be from forty-five minutes to sixty minutes. So from sixty minutes there, and let's look at forty-five. So that's one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that will be from 45 to 60 minutes. So let's go up now. We need to follow this curve to the top. So therefore, we have to draw a line. Let's try and get a value from here. So as you can see, we got. So let's now go to the y-axis. So as you can see. It's going to be roughly around about, so that'll be 126 there. 
So therefore, we're going to say 140 minus 126 for the last 15 minutes. So therefore, that will be 140 food items minus 126 food items for the last 15 minutes. And that will give us an answer of 12 food items. So therefore, 12 items were ordered in the last 15 minutes. 1.1.5, determine the 75th percentile for the data. Now the 75th percentile is also the third quartile. And remember now that this is grouped data. So the position of the third quartile is going to be three over four times n. So Q3 is equal to three over four times n, which will equals to three over four times, how many items do we have? 140 items. So the position will be three over four times 140 equals to 105. So therefore we're looking at 105 for the 75th percentile of the data. So if we look up here, we can now see that we have 100 here and 110. So in the middle will be 105. So let's look at that. So what you would do is you would take your ruler, you would try to be as accurate as you possibly can. Four, five, six, seven. So that'll be 37. So therefore, we are looking at 37 minutes for our third quarter. So once again, we will just write down our solution. So therefore, that will be 37 minutes. Right, so once again, make sure that you know how to work out the position of your third quartile. Now remember that this is for grouped data. The third quartile is three over four times N, three over four times the number of values, and that will be the 105th value. I don't confuse that with the actual solution. Remember, we're now looking at the 105th value and therefore there's it here, 105. And then we have to come down to our x-axis and read our answer from there in minutes. So x equals to 37 minutes. Calculate the interquartile range of the data. So what is the interquartile range? Now the inter quartile range. The formula is Q3 minus Q1. Now this is a measure of dispersion, measure of dispersion which is spread around the median. Q3 minus Q1. We already have the Q3 value which is 37 minus, let's get Q1. Now for Q1, the position of Q1 would be, let's write it down, well, we can write it down here. Q1 will equals to 1 over 4 times n. So that's the position of your first quartile. So 1 over 4 times 140 equals to, so that'll be 1 over 4 times 140 equals to 35. So it's the 35th value. So therefore, we're going to go up here and we're going to look at where is our 35th value. So it'll be in between the 30 and 30 and 40, 40th value. So it'll be here. Right. So let's now go to our curve. So that would be roughly about 22 minutes. So we're looking at around about 22 minutes. Now remember a range of answers are going to be accepted in the exam, but try to be as accurate as possible. Use your ruler. So therefore Q1 will be 22 minutes. So we'll write down 22 minutes. And 
just subtract it with 2. 37 minus 22 will be 15 minutes. So therefore, the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1, 37 minus 22 equals to 15 minutes. Learners, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe to JR Maths. Also, watch all the videos on jrmaths.com and I'll catch you in the next video.